Okay, let's talk about the Pythagorean theorem. And this is extremely, extremely important in mathematics uh, and geometry. So um, hopefully if you stick around with me for about 10 minutes, it might be a little bit uh, shorter, a little bit more than 10 minutes. We'll see how I do. But um, you're definitely going to either review or upgrade your knowledge in the uh, Pythagorean theorem. Now, the Pythagorean theorem uh, was derived from this uh, famous mathematician, Pythagoras, way back many, many uh, hundreds, thousands of years ago, a couple thousand years ago, if I'm not mistaken. And it has to do with triangles. So let's go ahead and just kind of get going right off the bat. So here we have different type of triangles. I'm just kind of sketching them out. Uh, let's see here, maybe one like this. And then we have one in particular that kind of goes like this. Okay. so. The Pythagorean theorem has to do with triangles and it relates the sides of the triangles, okay? Basically, as we can see here, uh, triangles have three sides, okay? Well, with the Pythagorean theorem, we can um, find the length of a particular side if we have two. So if we have two sides of a triangle, we can find the third side, okay? So this is what we use the Pythagorean theorem for. And, and by, while I'm at it, let me just go ahead and write it up here. So it's a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Now I'm going to explain all this in detail. Just hold on one second. Um, but I did want to write at least the Pythagorean theorem here. Okay, so this is mathematically what it is, and I'll let you know what the a's, the b's, and the c's uh, stand for and actually how to apply it. So the Pythagorean theorem, again, uh, will give us the third side of a triangle if we have two sides. So if you have two sides of a particular triangle, you can find the third side. Now, there is a huge, huge catch. Okay, so this is where I really need you to focus. So what is the catch? Well, the catch is it has to be a particular type of triangle. This does not work on every type of triangle, only a particular type of triangle, and that is a right triangle. So if you see a triangle with this little square, in the corner, that means that this is 90 degrees, okay? It's a right triangle. Now, right triangles are very kind of special triangles in, um, in geometry. And what's great about right triangles is we can apply the Pythagorean theorem to it. Now, these other triangles here, you cannot apply the Pythagorean theorem uh, to these type of triangles because these are not right. Okay, they're, they have different type of angles. However, in, a, in more advanced mathematics, there are formulas, law of sines, law of cosines, and stuff that we think can help us out. But the Pythagorean theorem is just an awesome uh, thing to, uh, to have at your disposal, and you definitely need to know it. So what, despite what if you're watching this video, you're likely in a math class, let's say uh, pre-algebra, algebra one, or whatever the case might be, um, you're going to you know, need to know how this applies. So let's do a particular uh, problem here. And let's start off with a nice easy one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write two triangles so we can kind of see how this works first, okay? Okay, so let's talk about the A, B, C stuff here, okay? A is the length of any side of the triangle. B would be the other side. Now the C is very special, okay? The C is the longest side. The C is always the longest side of the triangle. We call that the hypotenuse, okay? So this could be A and this could be B, or we can have this is A and this is B. It doesn't make a difference. These two shorter sides uh, can be A or B, but the longest side of the triangle, the one opposite of that little right angle, is always C, okay? So that's C, and that is, um, what we call the hypotenuse, all right? So let's go ahead and follow this simple uh, example. Let's say I have a triangle that has length three and length four, and I wanted to know what this side was right here. What was the length of this side? So what I'm looking for is what is the length or what is the value of C, okay? So that's what I'm looking for. So I'm trying to find C, because remember C is always the hypotenuse, and let's let, uh, Let's let A be equal to three. It could be B, but let's just, for our purposes, and we'll let B equal to four, okay? So let's apply the Pythagorean theorem 
and see how this works. Very simple. So again, it's going to be a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So a is, I'm going to use this color, a is 3, so we're going to plug in 3 there. b is 4, so we're going to plug in a 4 there. So let's go ahead and do that now. So a is 3 squared plus b is 4 squared and that is equal to c squared. Okay, so 3 squared is what? Okay, hopefully you know what that is. That just means 3 times 3. So 3 squared means 3 times 3, which of course is 9. So this is going to be 9 plus 4 squared is what? 4 times 4, which is 16, and that's equal to c squared. Okay, so 9 plus 16 is 25. So 25 is equal to c squared. So you're saying, well, that's good, but I want c, not c squared. No problem. All we have to do is just take the square root of both sides and we get what uh, c is equal to. So the square root of 25 is 5. Okay, it's actually plus or minus 5, but we're, we want the positive version. So c is equal to 5. And there you have it. So we started with these two lengths and we were able to find this other length. Now you could um, apply the Pythagorean theorem to all sorts of um, different type of problems. So I got a couple more minutes here before I hit the 10 minute mark. Let's go ahead and do another one. Let's see here. How about if I had, let's, I'm just gonna make something up, two, six, and let's say this is a right triangle and I wanna know with length, um, let's call this length A, okay? So how would this work? All right, so this would be length A, so this would be b and then of course this is my c value right so again a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared so let's just plug in the values we have a i don't know okay i'm solving for a so that's just a squared b let's say is equal to two so that's going to be two squared and c i have and that's um, a value of six so that's six squared so now i just go a squared plus 2 squared is 4, 6 squared is 6 times 6 or 36, okay? So how do we find A? Well, we have to solve this basic equation. We subtract 4 from both sides of the equation, and I get A squared is equal to 32, okay? So just like we were at this step, to get it to A, I just need to simply take the square root of both sides. So A is equal to the square root of 32. And I can go to my calculator and get a decimal. And actually, actually, actually uh, simplify this a little bit more with this radical, but you get the general idea. So doesn't you don't just need the, um, this doesn't apply just to find the hypotenuse. You can have the hypotenuse on one side. You can get any side um, uh, with uh, the Pythagorean theorem. Now. One unique thing about the Pythagorean theorem is this. Let's say you get a question from your teacher. They like to do stuff like this here. Let me see if I can draw this. I got a, I think I got a minute or two. They're gonna, they're gonna say something like, is one, two, three. They'll say, hey, is this a right triangle? Okay, a little pop quiz, right? Is this a right triangle? Well, in order for this to be a right triangle, this has to be true. One squared plus two squared must be equal to 3 squared, right? Because here's our sides, A and B, and this is length C, at least by the, the diagram here. And this is, and by the way, the hypotenuse is always the longest side. If I fa fail to say that, it's always the longest side. So if this is a right triangle, this relationship would be true. So let's see, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, and is that equal to 3 squared, 9? No, it's not, because this is 5. And is that equal to 9? No. So this is not, not a right triangle, okay? So therefore, obviously, it doesn't apply. All right, so let's go ahead and call this a wrap. Hopefully, you, um, you know, learned something new about the Pythagorean Theorem. If not, um, it's just a good review. Um, so let me just uh, invite you to subscribe to my channel. I am a math teacher, I teach middle school math, high school math, lots of college math, I have a degree in math. This is what I do, it's what I love, I've been doing it for many, many years. So I invite you to, to subscribe if you like my teaching style because I literally have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel and I'm posting all the time. So definitely be able to help you out. If you really like learning from me and you want my 
like my master math learning programs which I go above and beyond what I do on YouTube I'm gonna leave a link in the description of this video you can check that out if you like various different um, uh, all different type of uh, math levels from basic to advanced um, but anyways uh, check that out if you're interested if you like the video I would definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback um, let me know how you like this video do you have more questions on a Pythagorean theorem there's actually more much more problems you can be doing with the Pythagorean theorem more advanced type problems and um, you know that you know again yeah I'm trying to uh, squeeze in as much as I can in 10 minutes without overwhelming you but it is a huge uh, topic in math so if you have more questions let me know uh, just let me know uh, your, your feedback in general on how math is going it's uh, it's the way I know how what you're thinking and if you have questions, I can make future uh, videos maybe on those topics as well. But I definitely appreciate your time. I hope you found this video uh, helpful. And I wish you all the best in your math studies. Have a great day.